Good afternoon, punks and lovelies. It's your caffeinated bookworm here. Uh, this is my third booktube video, and I am going to be trying out a little bit of editing, so please bear with me. I am getting all this editing insight from tutorials on YouTube. I'm watching YouTube to learn how to make YouTube videos. It's great. Um, but I am going to go over some more of my favorite books. This is not an all-inclusive list, um, but it is a list of some of the books that didn't quite make it to my top 10, but that I still really enjoy. Some of these I've read more than once. Um, some of these um, I haven't read in a while. It's just something that stuck with me over the years. Um, that is still something I would recommend if somebody asked me. Um, the first one is Dry Ice by Bill Evans, and hopefully it's popping up right there. Um, Dry Ice by Bill Evans is what's called a cli-fi or climate fiction, um, a little play on, on sci-fi, I guess. Um, and I really do love books about that. Um, I think I mentioned in one of my earlier videos that I was a weird child watching the storms um, that rolled by. Um, in my When I grew up in Maine, I was um, the weird child who would sit on the porch when there would be thunderstorms and I would watch the lightning and listen to the thunder and the rain. And it was just something that fascinated me to know. And um, I, I was obsessed um, with weather anomalies for a while, ball lightning. And when Twister came out, I know Twister, um, there's so many problems with it. I don't care. I love the movie. I, I watch it once a year. Um, it's up there. Um, with movies that I watch once a year, like Practical Magic, The Lord of the Rings tr trilogy, The Hobbit trilogy, um, something that I just, I, I love and I gravitate towards when it's gray and stormy outside, you can usually find me near a window if not outside. Um, and so Dry Ice is a cli-fi book about uh, basically a machine that's been made to affect the weather. Um, if you know about the silver nitrate in the clouds and Ho Chi Minh Trail and the, um, the, uh, the, the theories behind that, um, this is what that's kind of leaning towards. Um, if you liked Geostorm, if you liked The Day After Tomorrow, this is going to be right up your alley. He does have other books. Um, he, they're with Marianne. Um, I forgot the name, but they'll, it should be right there. Um, but they're, they're also in the cli-fi vein, and it was just, it, it was really one of the books that I just absolutely adored because of the subject matter. I wasn't, um, I wasn't too intent on analyzing the writing style or the tropes or anything like that. It was just one of those things that I just, I loved um, because of the subject matter itself. Um, Nos4A2, N-O-S-4A2 by Joe Hill. Um, I'm sure the cat's out of the bag that Joe Hill is Stephen King's son. Um, you probably all know that. Um, when I read this book, I didn't know that. Um, and then when I found out that he was Stephen King's son, it was an even bigger, oh my gosh, I love this book. Um, this book and also American Gods by Neil Gaiman. When I saw that they were making TV shows or series about um, Nosfori 2 and American Gods, I was geeking all over the place. Um, I, I, I was so excited. It was all I could talk about. And then they, the series came out and they're not bad. I like them. I watched the first season of both of them and then I just kind of tapered off. And this is nothing against the, um, the series itself or the directors or, you know, the problems between the books and the series. It's just I have, like I said, um, full-time school and full-time work and four kids. And so the things that I watch on TV are limited. I mean, and they really, really have to engage me. And since I already knew the story um, on these two books, they weren't something that I felt I needed to continue with on the TV, sh the TV shows. Um, if I have a little bit more time later in the future, will I go back and revisit them? Absolutely. Um, but for now, you know, I'm kind of sticking to the the short 30 minute um comedies that we watch um now when the wheel of time and if there is a middle earth lord of the rings hobbit kind of thing that comes out in the future absolutely i will probably fail my classes and get fired from work to watch those i'm just kidding i wouldn't really but um those ones i would i would definitely carve out some time to to get into and watch um through and through 
um, The Bird Eater by Anya Alborn. Again, if I'm butchering your name and you see this, please forgive me. I really do love you and your books. Anya Alborn is going to be on my list of favorite writers. She's my horror novelist that I that I'm that's who I go to. If it's not Joe Hill, it's Anya Alborn. Um, she's a foreign writer. She wrote The Bird Eater, um, Seed, Brother, Within These Walls. They were all just really fascinating. The Bird Eater is on this list because it was the first book that I read by her. And when I read it, I knew I was going to be a fan for life. And I was tickled pink to find out that she didn't stop writing. Um, I know that, you know, sometimes you read a book and, you know, you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Like with Erin Morgenstern, I never thought she was going to put out anything after Night Circus. And so when she came out with The Starless Sea, I was so excited. I haven't read it yet. But I am going to read it this year because obviously, you know, Night Circus was on my my top ten list. Um, Bag of Bones by Stephen King, another another horror writer. This was not necessarily horror to me. It was definitely uncomfortable in a lot of places. Um, but I absolutely love this book. Um, I I read. Um, <sighs> The, that book that was under the bed, The Dust Catcher. I read that, The Moon and the Sixpence, solely because of this book. Um, and every time I think of stuff under the bed, I think of a dead person under there, their ghost just sitting under there reading. And if you happen to look under there, they're going to be like, give me back my dust catcher. That was my favorite part of the book. I've read the book like three or four times. It was great. Um, there's not a lot of Stephen King novels on my on my list Um there's two <laughs> um, on all of my lists because I've only read two Stephen King novels. Don't unsubscribe because of that, please. Um, but I read Bag of Bones and I read Doom and King and I love them both. Um, it's just when I was younger, Dean Koontz was my horror guy. Um, and I don't know, I never really dove into Stephen King. I do plan to, obviously, um, at some point, you know, there's just, you know, if you have a to read list, it's probably 5,000 books long at least. And so is mine. And right now I'm reading the Malazan series. I'm almost done with Gardens of the Moon. There will be a video out soon. As soon as I'm done, I am this close to being done. Um, and so there will be a video out on that. But with my to read list, as long as it is, it's just one of those things, some things fall by the wayside. Stephen King just happened to be one of them. Um, a Dirty Job by Christopher Moore. So <laughs> I don't even know how to I don't like, I don't like comedy movies a lot. I don't like comedy books a lot. Um, but a dirty job just sucked me in. One of my friends recommended it to me and she lent it to me so I could read it. And as soon as I opened the, the, the book, I was just hooked. It's hilarious. If you know anything about Stephen or I'm sorry about Christopher Moore, you'll know that his books are just really funny. Um, they have you, you know, in stitches, your side is hurting. This was no different. Um, it's about a guy who takes on the job of the Grim Reaper and it's so funny. I loved it. So that's on, you know, this list, uh, a brief, the brief history of the dead by Kevin Brockmeyer. I think I touched on this when I was talking about the books that I've read for school. And one of the short stories that we read was the ceiling by Kevin Brockmeyer. And I kind of touched on, um, a Brief History of the Dead um, by him. Uh, this is one of those books that I haven't read in a really long time. This was also lent to me by somebody that I used to work with. Um, and when I gave him back his book, I gave him back a new copy because the copy that he lent me, I had dog-eared it and written notes in the margins. And, you know, it was it was mine from, then, from that point forward. Um, Swan Song by Robert R. McCammon. Um, the beginning with the um, the bombs going out of the silos got me and I was hooked for the rest of it. Very disturbed, man. I'm trying to read some of his other books, um, along the vein of Stephen King, you know, these horror writers, I think you, you really have to have, um, a certain disturbed and unhinged frame of mind to write some of the things that they do. I'm sure Stephen King is the same way. Um, but Swan Song got me. I don't know why I continue to read Dean Koontz. Um, as a child, I think I started reading his books when I was nine. He was very, very strange, but um, I don't know. He was my he was my go-to horror guy for a really, really long time. Um, Robert R. McCammon, like I tried to read um, one of his other books. Uh, it was about a boy. Um, 
I just, it, it didn't, it didn't hook me the way that Swan Song did. Um, Swan Song, I, I, I think was one of the, um, better horror books that I've ever read ever. If I had to make a list of horror novels that I, that I loved, this would probably be in the top three. Alphabet of Thorn by Matric- Patricia McKillop. I had never heard of Patricia McKillop before, Alphabet of Thorn, and now I have a couple of her books. This is the only one that I've read so far, but it is really fascinating. And just the name itself is going to tell you a little bit of what it's about. Um, it is a it is a fantasy book. Um, it was um, it was about a, a foundling um, who was taken to a library type system underground, um, and the uh, journey that she goes um, from being raised specifically to do a certain job within the library system to discovering her past and and where she came from it was really good. Um, where the crawdads sing. Um, this is one of those bestsellers that I wasn't really expecting a whole lot from because there was so much hype behind. Um, but when I did read it, I was so impressed. I was crying through the book. And then when I was done with the book, I told everybody about it. And then I sent it to my mom. So my mom has it. <laughs> um, I am going to definitely buy my own copy here again, because um, it's one of those books you just, you have to have. Um, Winter Bay Abbey by John Bladdock. I don't know why I have that book. Um, I think it was one of the books that's probably going to end up on the um, video about books that I got for free or cheap that ended up being gems. Winter Bay Abbey was a classic uh, haunted house story um, on the on the on the um, on the beach. Um, it was really interesting. It held my attention. Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I've heard that there's another Blake Crouch book out there that is in the same vein as Dark Matter, and it's so similar that if you read Dark Matter first, you don't like the other book, and if you read the other book first, you don't like Dark Matter, um, because it feels like really a a copy of the same story. Well, I read Dark Matter. I haven't read the other book. I can't even remember the name of it, Um, and Dark Matter was, I absolutely loved it. Um, Hiroshima by John Hersey. Um, if you want to really understand the, the horrors of war and bombs, I highly recommend that book. Um, it's a tiny book. It was given to me um, to read by another person that I work with. That's where I get a lot of my books from um, before BookTube. Um, and it was something that I just, I tore through in, in a matter of hours. And then I wanted to reread it. In fact, I, I did. I think I turned it right back to the beginning and started reading it again. The People of the Book by Geraldine Brooks. Um, so this is going to be one of those um, books that I'm going to have to cut this out. <laughs> I don't know what I want to say about this book. It was a really good book. Read it. Um, the Lake of Dead Languages by Carol Goodman. This is an interesting book. I don't remember where I picked it up. I'm fairly certain it was in the um, the clearance section of like a half price books or something. Um, but it was a really well-written, um, poetic book about um, a school of girls and the the experiences that they have together. Uh, I, I did give it, I ended up giving it away, I think, before I moved from, um, from Texas to Ohio. Um, but that's another one of those books where I'm going to have to go get another copy because eventually I'm going to read it again. All of these books I would read again. Um, so that's it for today. Hopefully all of the little um, pictures of the books popped up. I also, I bought a piece of wood that I plan to use my um, my wood burning kit on. I have a wood burning kit around here somewhere. I just took it out. I don't know where it went. Um, So within the next couple of videos, you should see an intro with um, decaffeinated bookworm burned into this. Hopefully it looks a lot better than my last wood burning projects. A lot of side projects. Um, I like to dabble in different things. Um, I did did paint. I did some ACEO little collector paintings. Um, I, I sold a couple of them even, um, this was years ago though, 
and I have since stopped painting. Maybe I'll pick it back up. Um, I'm going to cut that out because it's going to make me sound like I'm not going to continue with the book too. But books are books are the hobby that I never give up. But books aren't really a hobby for me. They're my they're my life, um, as you will soon see. Um, so coming up soon, I'm going to do the book uh, reviews of the books that I wish I hadn't read. Um, I think that will be a rather interesting one, um, as well as the book subscription or the book deal subscription services that I subscribe to. You can get a lot of really good books um, for free or, or, or cheap. Um, if you wait long enough, they're going to show up on one of the book deal services. Um, I'm not one of those people who wait. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also not one of those people who like the books that I really, really love. I don't just have them on ebook. I will eventually order the actual hard copy of the book. Um, but if you want to, you know, get some books that might not otherwise hit your radar, those are really good places to start. And so I'll do a video on that soon. Um, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Hopefully my videos are going to be getting better. So don't let these first couple videos deter you. I am still watching those YouTube videos on how to make YouTube videos. Um, have a wonderful day.